Hello, in this lecture we will work some test type questions, questions that could be small enough to be formatted in a multiple choice type question. So we have company installed a manufacturing machine in its production facility at the beginning of the year at a cost of 93,000. The machine's useful life is estimated to be 20 years, a 390,000 units of product, of product with 7,000 salvage value. During the second year, the machine produces 15,600 units of product determine the machine's second year depreciation under the straight line method. So the key here is the straight line. One of the issues here is that they give us more information than we need for the straight line. So obviously this number of units produced, we would only need that if we did the units of production method. And so uh, that could be a bit confusing. This problem actually being much more straightforward than it would look by the amount of information given. So how do we calculate the straight line depreciation for any year, including the first year or the second year? And of course, it's, it, they're not telling us if we start at the beginning or the end, so we don't have any half-year convention happening. So we're just going to take the cost here. Then we got the cost of 93000 The thing to remember with straight line is that we do need to reduce the salvage value. Salvage value being the amount that will be valued as of the end of the time period, 20 years in this case. So we've got to reduce 7000 before we apply the straight line. So we're going to say this equals the 93,000 divided, I mean, sorry, minus 7,000. And that's going to be the amount to be depreciated. So that's the amount to be depreciated. I'm going to go ahead and underline this, home tab, font, underline. So that's going to be depreciated over the number of years, which is, of course, 20. And so we're going to have 20 years, and we're going to divide by that. That means that we're going to have 86,000 divided by 20, and that will give us 4,300 depreciation per year and that will of course be for the second year as well as the first year as well as every year for 20 years and once 20 years is up of course if we multiply this times 20 and we had depreciated for 20 years 4003 times 20 we would then have this 83 86000 in accumulated depreciation leaving us the amount as of the end of that date equaling to the salvage value. That's why we have to subtract that salvage value out. Next one says that an asset book value is 18100 on December 31st, year 5. The asset has been depreciated at an annual rate, so it's going to be property, plant, and equipment type of asset. The annual depreciation is 3100 on a straight line method. Assuming the asset sold for 15100 the company should do well. So we could start to record this transaction. There's going to be a transaction that will be taking place. And the first question I usually ask, is cash affected? And we're going to say, yeah, cash is affected. We sold the, the asset and we got cash. So we're going to have cash and the asset had a book value. And straight line, the asset was sold for 15100 and then something's going to go off the books here, which is going to be the equipment or the asset, whatever the asset was, some type of property, plant, and equipment. Now, the problem is when the asset is going off the books, there's two pieces to it. One, there's the, the cost of it, and then there's the accumulated appreciation related to it. So we could have the, the book value was 18. So if the book value is 18, 1, how do we get to the actual cost? Because the book value is the cost minus the accumulated depreciation. And then they, they say that the accumulated depreciation or the depreciation per year is 3,100. And uh, we're in year five. So it's in year five at this point. So if we take the 3,100 and if five years have passed for a straight line, then we have total depreciation that has accumulated to be 15,500 giving us a cost of the 18.1 plus the accumulated depreciation. So notice we usually think about that the other way. We usually think about, okay, we bought it for the 33.6 and then the accumulated depreciation is the 15.5. Therefore, the book value would be equal to the 33.6 minus the 15.5 to give us that 18.1 that is left over. So we kind of reversed into that Obviously, if we had a trial balance, we would have both numbers given to us uh, in that case or, you know, a, a backup schedule that would give us the values. All right. So that means that we can uh, debit cash and then the asset's going to go off the book at the cost, which the cost is uh, credit, which I'm going to represent with a negative 33.6. That's the cost. And then we have to have the accumulated depreciation. 
So of course assets going up because assets a debit. I mean cash is a debit and it's an asset, so we're gonna make it go up by doing the same thing to it, which is a debit. And then this asset has to go off the books, which is the property, plant, and equipment. Assets have a debit balance. We need to make it go down by doing the opposite thing to it, so we credit it. And then we have the accumulated depreciation. Remember, that's a contra asset account. So that means it's an asset, but it has a credit balance. We need to make it go down because we need to make it go away for this particular asset. And so we're going to do the opposite thing to that, which would be a, a debit. So we're going to debit the accumulated depreciation of 15.5. And note, of course, that the credits and the debits here, that's, that's representing the difference of that 18.1, the book value. Now we have the plug, meaning the cash less the book value what's the difference there and so we have the debits 30, 30,006 being uh, less than the 33 so we're going to need another debit to plug this so we can say okay it's the 30,006 minus the 336 so we could think about it that way the credits are 336 the debits are this plus this or 30,006 and that would be this minus this means we need a plug on the debit side of that 3000 that would be the plug I'm gonna do it with a sum formula negative sum I'm gonna sum these which means I want this plus this minus that but then flip the sign so it's a debit so that's the plug so that the three debits 33 6 add up to the credits now what account does that need to go to well we can see that uh, the book value is less than the cash we got which makes sense because if it's a debit, that means it's going to be like an expense because debits are expenses on the income statement. It's going to be a loss in this case. If it were to be a credit, that's kind of similar to revenue, which has a credit balance, which would be income. So this is a loss on sale. So a multiple choice could question could ask you basically any of this. They can ask for the whole journal entry. They might ask you for just part of it. What's going to be the debit? What's going to be the credit? What's going to be the net uh, income or loss? And it's best oftentimes to just write out the entire journal entry if possible because that will allow you to not make uh, mistakes on assuming what happens and having the debits and credits going the wrong way or something like that. Next one says that a company purchased a machine for $315,850. The machine has a useful life of 8 years and residual value of seventeen five. It is estimated the machine could produce 765,000 units over its useful life in the first year 112,500 units were produced in the second year uh, production increased to 116.5 units uh, using the units of production method what is the amount of depreciation expense that should be recorded for the second year so key is the second year now again they gave us some information we don't really need in this case and that is that they gave us the useful life and uh, we would need that if we use the double declining method or the straight line method but in this case, we basically just need to calculate it not based on time value, but based on the machine hours or whatever units, uh, units in this case, that uh, we're going to use. So we don't really need the eight years per se. We might want to estimate that for other reasons. But what we do need is going to be the uh, measurement based on the units of production. So we need the total units that will be produced for the entire t lifetime of the machine as well as the units per year we'll have to count the units per year and so we're going to take the cost here the cost is going to be 315850 we're going to take out the salvage value just like we kind of do when we do the straight lines so less the salvage value of 17.5 remember the salvage value is what we think we can sell it for after it's been basically used up kind of i think of it kind of like the scrap you could sell it for scrap so then we have the uh, 315,850 minus the 17,5 salvage. This is the amount that we want to depreciate over its useful life, not measured in time, but measured in the units that we estimate it will be produced. So we have the amount to be depreciated. And what we're going to do is we're going to divide that by the estimated that the total amount that will be produced. So, and that's going to be here. It is estimated that the machine could produce that's many units over the useful life. So, so units over the life, the useful life, we think it's going to produce 765,000. That's a key component. It might be on the box. You can think of it as a printer. You got it on the box. It says it's going to produce uh, 765,000 pages on it. And we'll go ahead and go to the home tab, underline that. If that's the case, then the cost per unit would then be what it would be equal to the cost less the salvage value that we're going to take it down to divided by the units over its useful life 
we're going to add decimals here. I'm going to go to the home tab, numbers, add decimals. So it's 39 cents per unit, 39 cents per unit. And then we're going to take that and we're just going to have to then count how many units. Again, if it's a printer, we'll have to count the pages that are produced. And it doesn't matter if it's year one or year two. Year, year one doesn't affect year two unless we happen to print, pre, uh, print or produce more units than was estimated for the life. So we can't obviously go over the 765,000 uh, units because then uh, we'll, we'll over depreciate it and we'll go below the salvage value. But as long as that's not the case, then we don't have to calculate year one before we can calculate year two. So we're going to say uh, units produced, produced in year two, which was this uh, 116,500, 1165. So unlike the double declining balance, we can go straight to year two and just take, okay, it costs 39 cents per unit. That's what we're estimating times the 116.5. And that gives us the depreciation for year two at the 45.435.